Hello everyone. In continuation with the Fourier series expansion, we'll be dealing. We are still dealing with the period two pi kind of functions or the examples, and this is the part three. So expand f of x in the Fourier series. The interval is zero to two pi, and f of x is minus pi zero to pi, and it is x minus pi pi is less than x less than two pi. So this type of functions we did not deal until the last two parts so this is the this is the function where the function has been defined into two different intervals one function into two different intervals so it is a piecewise function so let me just divide this question so this is the question number one whenever or the part one we will uh, we will find out the Fourier series expansion of this function and the second part where we will be finding out or we will be showing the deduction part okay so as the interval is 0 to 2 pi, the value of L is equals to 2 pi. And, sorry, value of Z, uh, this L is equals to pi. From where we have got this, please follow the first four parts. And how does L is equals to pi, you will come to know. Because, it, because whenever we are dealing with the mathematical, especially Fourier series, uh, the prior knowledge of each and every session is required. And when uh, and the, in the channel, I have put the lectures in that sequence only. So please follow the previous to understand this current thing. From where we have got this L is equals to pi. So the Fourier series is e, this Fourier series expansion for this particular function would be given as f of x is equals to a zero plus summation of a in cos of n x plus summation of b in sine of n x n is going from one to infinity, where a zero is one upon two pi integration. 0 to 2 pi f of x dx, we are just putting the value of f of x. But this f of x has been divided into two intervals, 0 to pi and pi to 2 pi. Therefore, it's 0 to pi minus pi is the, the value of the function in the interval 0 to pi. And the value of the function from pi to 2 pi is x minus pi. Therefore, this is, we have just written the value of the function. Now, minus pi is a constant so integration for the first integral would be x so it's 0 to pi because minus pi is a constant and this x the integration of 1 is equals to x from 0 to pi plus x minus pi the integration is x squared by 2 minus pi x and it's from pi to 2 pi therefore now that means what every x been replaced as pi and every x been replaced as 0 so if I am replacing this x by pi I will get here pi but I have got one more minus pi here so from there I am getting minus pi square the next step minus 0 minus lower limit 0 so x has been replaced as 0 so that been, that has been not written over here so it's because it's a 0 moving ahead with this pi to 2 pi so if I am putting so upper limit minus the lower limit so if I am putting 2 pi everywhere here I am going to get it it's 2 pi square so if I'll if I'll just do this particular thing here so it is 2 pi the whole square upon 2 will give me 2 pi square minus pi into 2 pi will we will get it as 2 pi square so we have got this as the second so upper limit for the 2 pi minus the lower limit is pi so every x has been replaced as pi so it's pi square by 2 but be only because it's a minus of lower limit it will give, give give me minus of pi square by 2 minus minus becomes plus over here because it's a minus one more minus from the lower limit so it will becomes plus and x has been replaced as pi so it is pi square okay so we have got a0 as minus pi by 4 just by doing some uh, additions and subtractions over here because it's 2 pi square 2 pi square minus plus will go off minus plus will go off and will remain here with the answer because it's 1 upon 2 pi minus pi square by 2 we will get it. so so ultimately this terms you will not have it here and this you will have minus pi by 4 okay so a n is 1 upon pi integration 0 to 2 pi f of x cos of n x dx therefore it's equals to 1 by pi integration 0 to pi minus of pi so we have just put the value of f of x in the two different intervals then minus pi is a constant so cos of nx the, the integration of cos of nx is sin nx upon n integration from 0 to pi 
integration from pi to 2 pi x minus pi cos of nx so here we'll have to apply the the rule which we have already done it in the first two parts that is first function second function so this is first this is the second so first function as it is into integration of the second will give me sine of nx upon n then now this is not the first this is not the second this is the first and this is the second function differentiation of minus differentiation of the first function will give me one and integration of the second function would be minus of cos of nx upon n square it's from pi to 2 pi therefore then this is not the first this is not the second this is this becomes first this becomes second then plus next term would be plus here differentiation of the first term that is 1 which is 0 and here onwards all the terms would be coming out to be 0 and that is the reason this series get terminated over here now if i'm putting this sin nx so if you'll observe the sine of nx the first bracket becomes 0 or you can say the upper and the lower limit of this particular term you will get 0 the reason is sine of nx becomes 0 when the value of x is pi and 0 when the value of x is equals to pi and 0 and therefore the first term here so this term the upper and the lower limit i will get it as 0 what would happen here here in this term so I'm just I have just written the next term here. So here, if you'll observe this sine of n x again, it is there, and if it, it is two pi and pi, again this sine of n x becomes zero for x is equals to two pi, and x is equals to pi. Therefore, this terms is no this term will not be present though it is x minus pi is there, but the second term I will be getting zero for both the limits, two pi and pi. Therefore, this term won't be there and I have to just deal with this term 2 pi upon 2 pi 2 pi. Therefore, if you observe here, the reason is sine of 2 and pi, sine of n pi is 0 and cos of 2 and pi. So, this is, we'll be dealing here, here. This becomes here is equals to or I can write down it here, which is equals to. 1 by pi as it is this term is not there this term is will not also not be there so cos of nx cos of nx upon n square and the limit is from pi to 2 pi so this is equals to 1 by pi x been replaced as cos of 2 n pi n square let me take it outside it's a constant minus cos of n pi right and this cos of 2 n pi is 1 as I have shown it here and cos of n pi is minus 1 to the power n and therefore this this entire thing will come at 1 by pi 1 upon n square minus minus 1 to the power n upon n square so because this is equals to 1 and this is nothing but minus 1 to the power n okay so this is nothing but this way and therefore the final answer I could write down as 1 upon pi 1 minus minus 1 to the power n upon n square. So believe me, this uh, the Fourier series expansion will require a lot of patience and a lot of concentration here. Please have that. So Pn is 1 by pi, integration 0 to 2 pi, f of x sine of nx, dx. Again, I'm just putting the values of f of x in both intervals. And therefore, again, 1 by pi minus pi. So integration of sine of nx is minus cos of nx upon n, 0 to pi. And this is again the same way that like first and the second function. So this is the first in differentiation first function as it is. So this is the second function, integration of the second function, that is minus cos of nx upon n. Then the differentiation of the first function is here. So this is a1, and integration of the second function is here. So this is getting uh, discarded. And then the next term would be zeros, and therefore we have not written those terms. Now, search for the sine term in the entire thing. So, what will happen here? The upper limit minus cos of nx upon n 0 to pi will become here. So, what we have done in the previous step, the same thing will happen here. So, it will give me cos of n pi upon n minus of course and minus cos of 0 upon n, right? And we have got minus here, we have got minus here becomes plus and therefore we have got minus 1 to the power n upon n. 
minus the lower limit. 1 minus is there for the lower limit. So, it is 1 by n. That is for the this term. Clear? Okay. What will happen here in the entire process over here? This minus sign is come here. But again, as I have told you, this becomes 0 for 2 pi and pi. And therefore, and therefore, you will have to just deal with this particular thing. You have to just deal with this particular thing. So, suppose I am just putting this plus, plus I am putting this, uh, the 2 pi and this one. So, it will become here. This is, this is the same thing. So, I am not putting it's 1 by pi is also here the same way. And this bracket is also present here. So, I am not, because this will, there will not be minus of. So, it is this minus 2 pi minus pi cos of 2 n pi by n, right, minus the lower limit. So, this minus minus becomes plus and I will have it here pi minus pi cos of n pi upon n. So, this pi pi will go off and I will have it at 0. This is 2 pi upon 2 pi minus pi and therefore if you will observe this pi will go off from here. I will remain here with minus 1 to the power n upon n minus 1 by n from here and one more term will come from here which is this 2 pi minus pi will get, uh, give me pi minus. So this is minus sign but I have got a pi and I have got it 1 by pi in the multiplication here so that will go off. And I will remain here with minus 1, uh, this cos of 2 n pi, cos of 2 n pi is equals to 1. So, this is 1. So, 1 upon n. So, I have got this minus 1 by n. Rest of the, all the things will go to 0. And therefore, the final answer becomes minus 1 to the power n upon n minus 2 by n. Just by adjusting, we will get this the part as dn. And therefore, if I will see this f of x is equal to a n, a 0 plus summation of a n. So, if I will just put the values of a n, d n and a 0, I am going to get this kind of series. So, it is minus pi by 4 plus 1 by pi. So, I have just put the values of a 0, a n and b n. Just to check it, a 0, a n and b n. That is all. Then, after putting n equals to 1, n equals to 2, n equals to 3, n equals to 4 and so on, we will be getting the series something like this. Something like this. So, if I am putting n equals to 1 here, n equals to 1, I am getting 1 minus minus 1 to the power 1. So, minus 1 to the power 1, I am going to get it as minus 1 to the power 1 is minus 1. Minus minus becomes plus 1 and therefore, I will be getting it here 1. So, it is 1 plus 1, 2. 2 upon 1 square cos of x. 2 upon 1 square. So, 2 is here actually. So, then if, if it will be n equals to 2, what will happen at n equals to 2? It is minus 1 to the power 2 will give me plus 1. 1 minus 1 will give me 0. And therefore, n equals to 2 terms is going to be 0. So, I do not have this term here. Similarly, n equals to 3, I am going to get it as again this 2 upon 3 squared cos of 3x which is here n equals to 3. Again n equals to 4 term will go to 0. Again n equals to 5 terms is present here. Similarly, if you will observe here in this term, in the sign term, if n is equals to 1, I am going to get it as 1 by 1, minus 1 to the power 1 minus 2, which is minus 1 minus 2, it is minus of 3 sin of x. So, it is minus 3 sin of x. Minus so, if it n is equals to 2, it is minus 1 the square which is plus 1. Plus 1 minus 2 will give me plus 1 and this is n is 2 over here. So, it is minus 1 by 2 sine of 2x and so on. So, that means here in this term, I am getting, I am going to get all the terms n equals to 2, n equals to 1, 2, 3 and so on. That thing is going to be 0 because it is the term is minus 1 to the power n minus 2. But because of this term present over here, that is 1 minus minus 1 to the power n, this term, this expansion will be getting the, uh, the value of n equals to 2, 4, 6 and 8 will be getting the value of this is equals to 0. And the odd number of n 
I'll be getting the value as this. And therefore, minus pi by 4 plus 2 by pi summation of. So this, this series we could write down as cos of 2n plus 1 times x upon 2n plus 1 the square. So this is the first time we are dealing here with until now part 1 and 2 we did not do something like this. But yes, we will require this because of the second deduction part. So cos of 2n plus 1 because we are getting this 2n plus 1 times x upon 2n plus 1 the whole square minus summation of 2 minus minus 1 to the power n. The same thing if you will observe here. If you will observe here same thing but as we are getting all of them are negative sign we have taken the negative sign out here. We have written the same series but only we have taken out minus sign over here. And therefore, we can rewrite this entire thing as f of x as minus pi by 4 plus 2 by pi summation of cos of 2n plus 1. So, why this has been written over here 2n plus 1 if you will observe. If I am going to put the n equals to, so if you will observe this is n equals to 0. Because we have written cos of 2n plus 1. Cos of 2n plus 1. And this is, that means what odd terms, we are getting only odd terms of the cos. Like cos of x, cos of 3x, cos of 5x and so on. And therefore, we have started with n equals to 0 here. Okay, so this is what is the series we have got it and this is the second part we will be dealing here now. That is the deduction part. 1 upon 2n plus 1 the whole square is equals to pi square by 8. So here in the particular series here, we have to put x is equals to pi. What is the reason? I should have, I should have my x in such a way that this x should belong to the interval 0 to 2 pi. It should not be outside the interval even. So if I put x is equals to pi in this particular series, I am going to get is f of x is equals to minus pi by 4 plus 2 by pi summation of. So if I am putting x is equals to pi in this, so second term, this term will go to 0 obviously, right? Because sine of nx term is there, n pi sine of n pi is always 0, 0. So second term will not be present. What will happen with the first term? If I am putting x is equals to pi, first term as in this cos term. So here cos of 2n plus 1 times pi will give me always minus 1. Will always give me minus 1. Because if you will observe cos of n pi is equals to minus 1 to the power n. And therefore cos of 2n plus 1 times pi will give me minus 1 to the power 2n plus 1. So that means 2n plus 1 is an odd term. So every time this minus 1 to the power odd term will always give me equals to minus of 1. This is the reason over here. And therefore, I am going to get it here. Now, if I am putting the, up, uh, the LHS side, what will happen to the LHS side? This is f of pi. So if I am putting f of pi here, I have to take the help of limit, the left hand side limit and the right hand side limit. So this is what we have to write down in this way because the function has been given to me in a two different intervals. This, this remains the same because only minus sign we have taken it out. And what will happen here? Limit x tending to pi minus or left hand side f of x is equals to minus of pi. Right? And this becomes 0 here. This becomes 0 here because we have got it. The, the, the interval, the function has been defined in such a way. And therefore this minus pi. So just by adjusting the terms, just you observe the steps. The, the further steps are very, very easy to follow. So this is the very important term to understand from where we have got this x is equals to pi. Because we want it's 2n plus 1 the whole square kind of term. I don't want the term something like this. This should go, uh, this should vanish from this particular thing. So sine of x becomes 0 and for that reason we have chosen this x is equals to pi and we have got this deduction part. Just take a pause and understand each and every step thoroughly. Yeah and this is the self observation slide with only two questions with the, along with the two answers. If at all you have any query please comment in the comment section so that I can answer for those queries. Thank you. Happy learning.